check out our online training programs. If you're a competitor in CrossFit, check out TTT Compete. For those of you that want to look good and feel good, check out TTT Fitness. Head to trainingthinktank.com for more info. Give me like kind of a cue when I get started. All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of New Show. It's New Show, it's New Show. Why is it called New Show? Nobody knows, it's New Show. Here's Jake stretching after his workout, but we're over here. We're about to talk through Tuesday, November 23rd's RX Path workout. Option number one, Brandon Dorman and Kyle Habdo are demo athletes. The workout is three rounds, 20 cals for the men, 15 for the women of C2 bike, and 20 toes to rings. You go through, through three rounds for time of that. You rest as needed rest as needed. Then you move into three rounds of 20 or 15 cals row, 50 foot handstand walk. After you go through the three rounds for time, bam, rest as needed. Then three rounds of 20 cal ski and 20 GHD sit-ups. So this workout is training the cyclical movements and pairing it with gymnastics to try to train people's ability to do high volume gymnastics while they're under fatigue. This is put into our TTT Compete program at a time we're getting ready for the winter is coming. Is my mic working? Is my mic working? Yes, it's working. Okay, <laughs> all right. Uh, so this workout specifically is in a training cycle that's getting us ready for our end of the year competition. Winter is coming, and it's also a base building phase for the open. So right now we're doing progressions and giving people volume of all of the gymnastic skills that we see in the open. Handstand walk, GHD sit ups. We're in quarterfinals. Toes to rings have been at the CrossFit Games, but we generally call that some sort of flexion. So we're either doing toes to bar or toes to rings. And prior to this, in the actual training program, they were doing hand release push ups, strict press, bench press, and wall walks. For the sake of this video and keeping it in some sort of a normal amount of time, we are gonna just show the Metcon portion of the day. Brannon is gonna do the workout and he's gonna start each interval on the eight minutes. So he'll do his three rounds, then at the eight minute mark, he'll do his next three rounds, <clears throat> then at the 16 minute mark, he'll do his last three rounds. Kyle is going to do the workout, the first one at max effort, and then he is going to literally just rest as needed until he feels like he can put a good effort into that second one. He's gonna be a little bit less high power and less good at the gymnastics as Brandon, so he'll probably start to fall off the pace in the beginning, and then he'll just set his rest time and we'll keep an eye on them as they do the workout. They're already on the bikes. It looks like they've already warmed up. Are we going? We're ready to go? Okay, yeah. Uh, you know if anyone's on there? Uh, on the clock? Like we'll come back. We'll come back. <laughs> Ten seconds. I'm going to get a marker so I can try to keep track of times of these. I always lose track. And we're off. All right, just some things I noticed. Kyle is on damper three. And looks like he just ramped up to 1,800 cows per hour. Brandon is on damper five. He's holding 1,700 cows per hour as he does that. Uh, these paces are pretty fast for, yeah, so Kyle's back down to 1,300. So that means he probably just like accelerated into a quick pace and then tried to throttle back. I'm gonna get a marker over here so I can try to keep track of times that they finish. And I'm gonna walk out of frame and get a mini whiteboard. But you can watch them bike. Um, this is kind of an interesting form of biking for anybody that's not into fitness. It doesn't, or that is into fitness that hasn't done road cycling. It's not exactly the same being on a C2 bike. There's no like balance stability. The gear shifts aren't as like, oh, and now we're on toaster bar. Um, anyways, I'll finish on the C2 bike and I'll get back to the toaster rings with Brandon. But on these biking, uh, base workouts, I feel like fitness is a much bigger determinant than skill on the bike. But if people have skill on the bike and have gotten good at road bikes, getting onto these, getting used to that high RPM pace and pedaling really quick just is really good for getting the legs fatigued. Like if you're doing squats or front squats or thrusters or wall balls um, and you're pairing it with gymnastics. This cyclical stuff that we paired with the gymnastics is a good way to create that same fatigue 
but maybe not put the mechanical system under as much stress because, you know, if you're doing wall balls, thrusters, toes to bar, squat cleans, squat snatches, all these fast, high power things all the time in high volumes, it's really hard for the joints to be able to take it. So this is a good way when you're in the kind of an off season base building to create some fatigue, but still keep the body in a little bit more of a healthy state. All right, now that I've kind of got some of the overall big picture stuff about biking out of the way, they've already finished the gymnastics and toes to ring and they're back on the bike. But I'll start talking about that because we'll get back over to that uh, shortly. Brandon is almost finishing his 20 cows. So that's taking him about 45 seconds, which is super fast. All right, and then toes to ring. And just a different movement than toes to bar. It like in order to do it well, you're under a little bit less tension because I think when you pull away from a bar that's fixed, like an actual pull up bar, your lats get engaged and you get a little bit more pec and upper body engagement on the rings. If you push away from them, you don't really have any tension because they're on straps. So it becomes more rhythmic and just slow. I think for most people that are in the RX path, the goal would be to try to do these unbroken in every set. I don't think breaking these up makes, you know, saves you any time. And I think the goal would be unbroken toes to ring and then hold as fast of a bike pace as you possibly can. You notice, uh, well, he's on Kyle right now, but Brandon, he uh, reset his monitor each time. That's what I would recommend doing. If this were an actual competition, you'd probably have somebody do that for you, but for the sake of training by yourself, I think it's good just to not be using rollover. Some people will you know, bike to 20 cows in minute one and it'll roll over to 21 and then they'll go to 40 in the second round. And that doesn't really make sense to be using the rollover calories. So I think it'll just force you to learn how to accelerate and get started. All right, so they're on their last round right now. I'm not sure exactly how far behind Kyle is. Um, his bike pace is still what it started at is 1300 and Brandon just finished, so I can't tell you what it is, but he'll be finishing up now. We'll be able to get whatever his total time is if he's going to go on the eight minute and I can give you kind of a work to rest ratio target based on what he's going to do in this workout. He might even start earlier knowing Brandon, he won't want to rest for four minutes. But as of right now, we're at the 405 marker on the clock. If he goes on the eight minutes, it's almost a one-to-one -one work to rest ratio. So this is, if you do a one-to-one -one work to rest ratio in training, you're using like a more sustainable energy system. It's probably something that he probably could do this workout as like five rounds at this pace and he wouldn't be totally selling out. So 423, you could tell that even by just, you know, his posture and cadence. You're looking at Kyle now, but Brandon looks pretty fine. His breathing's not completely out of whack, but Kyle's not really that far behind. Um, he might actually be able to maintain the rest paces with Brandon. It'll just be dictated by how fatigued is he. Now, if you're doing this workout in training, or if I was doing this workout in training, let's say even I got, you know, five and a half minutes because Kyle's finishing up now. Let's say I went slower than him in this workout. I might actually still take 15 minutes of rest between these workouts to give myself more. Oh, 5.03, Kyle finish. Okay. So not that much of a discrepancy, about 40 seconds between the two. Um, Brandon is on the ground now, but I think, yeah, that's just his grip, not his. Brandon, is it your grip? Were you just stretching your grip? Just because I didn't Oh, okay. Uh, Brandon was on the ground when he was showing you. I didn't know if he was messed up, but he's getting his hands ready and prepped to handstand walk. Uh, Kyle, I heard him say something about his hip flexors. Yeah, yeah. hip flexors? Yeah. yeah, so I mean, that makes sense. If you're pulling your knees up on a bike at whatever, 80 to 90 RPMs, and then you're going and you're doing 20 toes to bar or toes to rings and pulling your legs up, it's a lot of hip flexion and pulling up. But I think when you get into these types of workouts, the stimulus is really dependent upon just what your fitness is. If somebody's in the intermediate path doing this, it's not gonna be this dense. It's gonna be more split up, more EMOM based, more skill based, because 
the athletes really haven't yet developed the resilience to be able to do that. Whereas right now you're watching Brandon, who is very, very high level RX, uh, probably could still compete in certain types of events that wouldn't challenge some of the mechanical things he's dealing with in his knee. And Kyle is probably on the lower tier of RX, or not lower tier, maybe more of a mid tier RX level athlete. Somebody that would make it into quarterfinals, do pretty well, but not really have a semifinal opportunity or level of fitness. But he seems okay. Kyle, are you going to go on the eight also? Or are you going to wait? Okay. So he's going to go on uh, Brandon's pace. Brandon was almost a one-to-one -one work to rest. Uh, that means Kyle's working for five minutes and resting for three minutes. So again, they're okay. That means that they didn't really like sell out in that workout. And that's kind of the intention of this type of intervals is you're not really doing it as a three rounds for time max effort pace. You're doing it almost in context thinking that it's nine rounds and that it's a longer workout and it's pre prepping you for longer workouts. Whereas if you do it at max effort and then the next three round workout and the next three round workout, you're just barely moving. You're not really getting a good training stimulus because you're practicing doing CrossFit slow. So how you navigate a workout in training is really important with setting an intention for what you're using it to prepare for in sport, which is why we create daily, tra daily training videos to help people go through the program. All right, we got about 20 seconds left more of rest. And then we begin three rounds of 20 cal row, 50 foot handstand walk. So 50 feet of handstand walking for three rounds, 150 feet for somebody that's really high level in handstand walking, that's really not a lot of volume. For somebody that is not skilled in it and has to do five feet at a time, it's a lot of volume. Oh, and they're off. Um, so as they do this, my understanding of Brandon's fitness is that this will be row, get off, quick 25, quick 25, they'll probably be about five to eight seconds, uh, depending on how fast he wants to walk on his hands. And Kyle's will probably be a little bit more slow, controlled, uh, more of a focus on movement. And I don't know if that will bottleneck him in the later rounds. I'm not aware of his fitness at that enough of a level to be able to tell you. Um, but just in terms of fitness and speed. Brandon's holding 1,720 cows per hour. That's really fast to maintain for 20 cows. Kyle's at 1,400 cows per hour, which is still a really fast pace. But um, that sets Brandon up that he's getting off and Kyle still has three cows left. So pretty quick transition up into the handstand walk at the 50 over the line at the 56 or 57 and quick transition back, and he's gonna start his row. They started this workout at the eight minute mark, and he's finishing round one at 9.08. So this is probably gonna be like a three minute, 40 second workout for Brandon. Kyle's a little bit farther behind. And you could just see like the handstand walking as a skill, it's still developed, but the transition before he has to kick up to his first handstand walk is a little longer. And then the speed of even just going over 25 feet, I think we're already at eight, nine, 10, 11. I think that was 11 seconds. I'll check the next time. Um, but that just shows you that even just in the walking, Brandon is taking about eight seconds off of just doing handstand walks at a quicker speed. So many little places that as you get to the higher level in CrossFit, that's where the separation of workouts are actually happening. Um, this you know, on the cyclical stuff, I think it's just like overall fitness and skill on the machines, but even in the higher skill gymnastics stuff, there's levels of separation. All right, so Brandon seemed like he was back down in the 1400s for that 20 cals. It looked like it took him just under a minute to finish that, 53 or 54 seconds. Handstand walking is still fast. The transition was still pretty quick. He's finishing, see how long this break is. It was 19, 21, 20, so four seconds to turn around and then we'll see how long it takes him to finish this. Six, seven, eight seconds to finish the handstand walk. All right, I'm paying more attention to Kyle on this one so I can try to get a second count for the transitions and the handstand walk just to be able to give you some sort of a contrast to show you how athletes separate themselves in these type of workouts. So he got off at 41 and he's kicking up at 53. So 12 second transition before starting. And that is 
10, 11, 11 seconds to finish. So it was probably right in the last round, but that just shows you there's just so much time to be made up on these transitions, on the rest times, on the speed of being able to actually handstand walk, on the rower, and all of these things really need to be individually prescribed as you're going into it. So if you go into thinking that you're gonna race your training partner all the time and there's a discrepancy in fitness, you're just gonna get bad training for yourself. Whereas Kyle right now, he's at the maximum sustainable. Oh, I missed. Brandon, what was the time when you finished? 11.30? Oh, you got one more. He still got one more. I distracted him mid-set. He just took it in stride. All right, 11.50, he's got 25 feet left and then he finishes this interval and then he'll have this till the 16 minute mark to finish. So I was off on the time. I think I was off on the time. Maybe he went out a little bit faster on purpose in that first round. Bam, 4.06 to finish that. So 4.23 for the first workout, 4.26 for the second workout. Still gonna be about a one-to-one -one work to rest ratio for him on this one. And we'll see where Kyle is, cause Kyle's still got a little bit. I probably recommend to him after he finishes that he just takes a little bit of a longer rest, even though that means that he's not gonna be with his training partner at the same start time. This is something that people have to realize if they're in a training group of you know varying levels of fitness and varying levels of training experience is sometimes if you're always starting and always racing, one person's getting an effective stimulus and another person's not getting an effective stimulus. What's gonna be in the video? <laughs> okay. All right, so Kyle is finishing his first handstand walk at the 13 minute mark. So we're five minutes in and he's got 25 feet left. It was taking him 11 seconds to finish that before, but he's on a rest break right now. So I'm guessing this will be somewhere around 5.20, 5.30 finish for him, which means now if he goes on the 16 minute with Brandon, he's only getting two and a half minutes of rest. So it'll really slow him down leading into, all right, 13.22 means 5.22 to finish. So if he goes on the same clock right now, he's basically gonna get two and a half minutes of rest, which I don't think would be adequate to put out high power, but maybe he wants to train himself to do that. We'll find out. Kyle, yeah. taking a longer rest? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he said, yes. <laughs> and Brandon's over there encouraging him to go at the 14 minute mark. Yeah, but so had he gotten sucked into that, I didn't know what he was gonna do, but had he gotten sucked into that, this last workout would have just been slop. He would have barely been moving on the skier. The GHG sit ups would have gotten sloppy and it just really wouldn't be good training. Whereas Brandon could probably start at the 15 minute mark and be okay. And that's just a, a marker of fitness, aerobic fitness, recovery, training age, how much these skills take out of them. And you gotta kind of realize where your fitness is when you're doing a workout to get that kind of stimulus right for yourself. All right, what else? I think I'm just gonna sit here for a second and get my coffee. What kind of coffee do you drink? <laughs> it's cockroach coffee. The Dunkin' Donuts brand out of the cockroach curry. I think you gotta explain that. We have a Keurig machine on site, and in Georgia, cockroaches are apparently a common thing. And we've seen cockroaches crawl out of the Keurig. No one else will drink out of it anymore, but I'm staying true to myself that Dunkin' Donuts out of the cockroach coffee machine is still fine. It's improving my immune system. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brandon gets, uh, first of all, Brandon wants to talk shit about golf. He, they show him the golf swing, go ahead, yeah. Yeah, he's better than me, it's okay, I can admit it, just for right now. Um, I'm on the 50 year plan with everything. Just I need to be able to do air squats by the time I'm 60 and I'll outlast them all. <laughs> all right, Brandon, you're starting at 16? Okay. I forgot what I was talking about, man. I got distracted. I think as far as like doing the volume, this would be the hard one. This one? Oh, the reps. Doing 20 each round did. Yeah. Yeah. So I was just telling you about doing the program that hasn't been doing the volume. Yes. Hey man, there's a mic. Come talk to you. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, well, Brandon's, Brandon's walking away. What he was saying, which we, I didn't really even think about, it wasn't being picked up on the mic, was we've been running progressions to get people used to high volume GHDs. And if you're not used to that, that could definitely beat your body up. And it could be one of those movements that might not be something that you want to just start jumping into general training for. Having some preparation and getting used to it would be highly recommended. That movement itself can cause people some discomfort in their back. It's been known in certain circles where people go and do crazy amounts of volume without any preparation to cause rhabdo. So it makes sense to build slowly with that movement. Brandon has been doing volume to prepare himself for that. Um, for a period of time, he didn't really do them and didn't really want to subject his body to that stress. But once they got tested at the quarterfinal level, he decided he wanted to start doing them. So he's about to do that in a little bit. He's at 1,600 cals per hour right now, finishing up 20 cals at 45 seconds. <laughs> I can't. He's a man on a mission. All right, so 40 seconds. Let's see what the GHG sit-ups look like and see what the speed looks like. All right. Three, four, five. All right, so he did about five reps in just under 10 seconds, so a little under two seconds per rep. It's a good speed to be able to maintain. Uh, different people coach this technically different. So Brandon kind of pulls with his hamstrings down against the bottom of the pad and has his knees bent at the top. I've seen athletes like I think Alex Smith does this and it can kind of relieve some of the pressure on your back. Whereas in the level one, a lot of times they, and some of the best athletes in the sport will aggressively flex their quads as they're pulling up. So when they're at the top, they're in completely straight legs. All right, uh, Kyle Habdo has started. I don't know if you guys had saw him in the back of the frame. So he's not that far behind. Maybe he started at the 17 minute mark and just took one extra minute of rest. Brandon's getting back to this second set of ski erg. Let's see what pace he settles out at. So on the acceleration up, he's at 1500 cals per hour. And it looks like he's maintaining that. He's at 1450 ish. So between 14 and 1500. Kyle started at the 17 minute mark. He took a minute five to do his 20 cals, and now he'll go into his GHDs. So let's see what the speed discrepancy is. I'll look at the 20 where he is now. Okay, 21. One, two, three, four. Five. All right, so 12 seconds to do five reps and a little bit of a break. So again, speed of movement will be a huge separator. And then also obviously being able to tolerate the gymnastics while in a fatigue-based setting. This will be a good visual potentially for you to see Brandon versus Kyle just to see the discrepancy in speed and see if Brandon can kind of keep his speed up. Yeah, so you can see Kyle had to take another break. This movement is super challenging, just on the core, on the hip flexors, on your general mobility. And it's one of the things that has come out in testing at CrossFit Regionals, CrossFit Games, cause a lot of controversy. People are like, oh, this isn't safe, this is bad for your back, PT experts. Um, but this is kind of one of those things that it's kind of a staple in just the general fitness program of CrossFit in the CrossFit testing body. And it's something that if you do cultivate the ability to do, is a general indication that your spine is able to move through pretty intense ranges and your midsection is strong enough to be able to stabilize it. So being able to train it and accomplish them is just a, um, a higher level skill that you should put some base level of training into. All right, Brandon Finish, he is on his last round now of ski erg and then ghd sit-ups those ghd sit-ups looked a little bit more labored so we'll see what his core looks like oh my god travis mayer is in the house travis come over here and take over the mic and finish this off commentate on brandon sprinting faster than you do you think you beat him in this yes oh come on what kind of submission was that you just got caught up it's on the whiteboard go read it on the white they're finishing though so you only got a couple seconds to stay relevant in this video, Travis. <laughs> All right, Brandon is at mid 1400 cows per hour still. Kyle's at a thousand. So that, again, that'll give you kind of a target pacing structure for like, what? You don't want to do that. Do what? Stop pulling before you hit. The 
<laughs> that see little details. That's what high level athletes notice. You you'll pull all the way through the line. I think when you get to the point, this workout is really. <laughs> Oh, Brandon did it too. <laughs> I've seen you do that before. Don't call them out. <laughs> All right, 20 more GHD sit-ups and Brandon is done. And then Kyle has two more rounds to finish. So let's see Brandon's speed permitted on this, how it stays. So he'll be 60 reps in by the time this is finished in a pretty short window. So we're at the three minute, 10 second mark now. So doing, even if you just told me, hey Max, do 60 reps of these for time, I might not even be able to do it in sub four minutes. I just have to take rest. I kind of be like Kyle here, where he's doing a couple reps at a time and taking a break. Um, whereas Brandon is gonna be at a higher level of just general fitness and capability on this skill. And once these muscles start to really fatigue, this movement gets kind of brutal. So we're about to watch Kyle figure out how to break him up. I think he was doing doubles. So he's, he did doubles. He's got one more set. Brandon finished 344. And Kyle right now, well, oh, let me write all this down. Oh no, that's not right. 544 there. Five, yeah, so we're at the six minutes total into the workout. There's one round left, Travis is taking them. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Do I need to be close to you? No, man. Oh, this thing actually works now. Yeah? yeah? Oh. All right, so we're on. So we have Kyle slowly dropping his pace. He was just at about 1,200. And then he's going to be transitioning to the... My days are over? What are you... You grabbed a whiteboard and started writing nothing. Chicken scratch. Yeah, nothing of any importance. And sorry, I don't know what you're really talking about because you're 22 minutes into a workout. We'll see if he does the little baby pulls again. But let's get a interview with old Brandon over here. Brandon, how do you feel? Well, hold on, we should wait till he's done because that's just rude. Uh, We're still staying on his pace. Make sure you finish those pulls all the way through, bud. I'll be honest, I didn't know this thing worked. I was always curious why they kept talking into it like it actually worked. <clears throat> oh yeah, there it was, that's how you finish. Come on, Kyle. All right, real insight would be the position of how he sets up versus if you watch Brandon do it, he sat a little bit more forward on top of the GHD. And we've all kind of played a lot with that technique of how much does it alleviate off the midline and stability versus when he hinges, hinges with his butt all the way off. It's a lot more ab and pulling. I've played, a, I've played with both of them. When we did the med ball at Rogue, I sat a little bit further off because it was easier to use the momentum of the ball versus pulling more with my abs versus I feel like that position just kind of blows up my hip flexors more than when I sit kind of on top of the pad. But definitely something I would play with to see if it can alleviate the feeling that he's expressing right now. <laughs> but I think it's also just a trial and error of finding like the best position for you. Cause that was one thing I noticed during the games is our GHCs were just a lot slower. So just trying to figure out the best way to do it. And ladies and gentlemen, there he is, 24 minutes and seven seconds, and I'm done. Oh, Brandon, 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 hey. let's talk us through the workout. I didn't see anything except for your final round. Yeah, we already talked through the workout, Travis. I didn't know that. Well, you should know that, you're the commentator. I wasn't the commentator. I love you, I'm kidding. I love you too. Um, so how was the workout? So the, to the toes and rings felt okay when I was doing them, but once I got to the GHD sit-ups, it was really, really hard to keep moving, especially not doing a ton. So I would tell everyone that's in the program, if you haven't been following the GHD progression, scale that back or just do an do 50. version. Yeah, yeah, do 50. <laughs> but the 20 every round was really tough for me, so that was definitely the hardest part of the workout. Do you think that your position on GHDs is better than Kyle's? I didn't see Kyle, so I'm not, my positions aren't great on GHDs. Is Brandon's position on GHDs better than yours? Much better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of here. This is Max's turn. I don't know what else you want to do. I have nothing else to say. Welcome to the new show. It's new yeah, show. Okay. Why is it called new show? Nobody knows. It's new show. And clearly Kyle still has a lot of energy because he's able to dance. He should do more fitness. It's new show, it's new show. Why is it called new show? Nobody knows it's new show.